everything had changed. You read that Luke 16. You know what Abraham said to him? You had your opportunity in life. You remember. Yeah. So he could remember. So even in hell, you have all your senses. Because Abraham reminded him, says he remember, son. So you remember all that you did. You know it. Yeah. Even the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, they came back to him, follow me. But he had turned those words down. Eh? Follow me. He says, now listen. Now he wants to be an evangelist. Now he wanted to be an evangelist in hell. He wanted to be an evangelist. Eh? On earth, he turned down the opportunity. Because when Christ says, follow me, like he did the other disciples who followed him. You remember, they went about preaching, casting out devils. But he himself, he had the same opportunity to be an evangelist. He turned it down. But now in hell, now he wants to be an evangelist. Eh? <laughs> He wants to be a minister. He remembers on the earth. I have five brothers. I'm going to marry Lazarus. I end. Can you not send Lazarus? Do not parry Zira. Do not see how you know their behavior. Those ones, they only want. Ah, na time ye kunzwa parry. They don't have time to. Ah, na time ye kwenye kutende kuru parry zwa. To go for missionary. Hey, muri kono kuno ano wakadar. You see, there are such people. It was here. He knew them. What did Abraham say? They have Abraham and the prophets. They doesn't listen to them. Even if a dead man is raised, they will not listen. His kids, each one, seem like mine. You, each one, seem like just my sons and daughters in one way you are spiritually speaking the Lord God has put your souls in my care because you come listen to me you believe me and in one sense of the word you are my sons and daughters says always remember keeping the commandments is a great thing being raised in a good home is a heritage from the Lord. Amen. Inaka, amen. To be fine kids with good personalities, wonderful education, all that is good. But there is one thing that you just don't inherit. Amen. That you've got to accept. That's eternal life. You will only do that by following Jesus Christ. By a born again experience. Don't neglect that. Always remember. Accept that voice. That say follow me. And you will always come out right. I believe you will. Then you will be like. The Apostle Peter, Paul, someday that one souls to Christ Jesus. God bless you. Amen. Now, as we call uh, Brother Muzimba to come up, he is going to lead us. Amen. Still we're happy because there are some kids who are going to come up front. If they, if they see your frightening faces, they might forget all they were practicing. Amen. Amen. Uh, 
that he has given to our kids and also as a reminder to all of us because every one of us is called the Lord we are also his children brother Branham taught us that God uh, doesn't have grandchildren Amen. Amen. so we don't want to waste too much time because the opening remarks have already been given I just want to read the quotation then straight away we start our program I would like to read from the, uh, from the message uh, paragraph 101. 101. 56.11.25 Right. Brother Brunham says, you see these young women coming weeping, weeping life before them. Weeping life before them. They are at crossroads. They are victims of circumstances. What? Do you realize, old man, when you were boy, our boy has got ten times that you have. Sister, sister, do you realize that your daughter has ten times has ten times uh, uh, has ten times uh, temptation, temptation uh, you had when you were a girl. So, so what will her daughter have? So I think we have seen uh, from what the pastor was saying the great responsibility that we have to accept responsibility for, for, our, for our children for our young women for our young men so that they also come upright to have the same understanding of the message the way we do. So may the good Lord richly bless you Amen. Amen. How many are under expectation? Oh, beautiful. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, we're we now beginning our program. Uh, we'll begin uh, by having our, our infant class.
later on. So for now, they're going to give us two songs. Start the school year's high court. And we're not going to be back as a Praise the Lord.
It's written in the skies. It's written in every newspaper. It's written in the face of the earth. Is this the end? The prophet lived on the term when the handwriting was on the wall for a nation. But we really living on the term when the handwriting was on the wall for time. All nations, earth, everything. Time is at the end. So we must search for scriptures to find the hour that we are living. Is this the end, say? Praise the Lord. Amen. And someday, my prayer friend, if you don't stay under the blood, the kingdom of Satan will overtake you and carry you away. The communion 57 J0418. Praise God. Amen. The repent for the Lord. Oh, what I say again, the Jesus. Exodus 14, Exodus 14, the Lord shall fight you and shall watch your peace. Teach your children to love, respect, and read, read Bibles. Praise God. Amen. If we make a war, more lovely children would not want to run away, make things more for them, where they feel welcome and nice, comfortable at home, where home they cannot touch the way till they get there, and that's the way home should be. Susanna Wesley had 70 children. She found two hours every day or more to pray. She prayed with the children. She did the washing machine and the dryer as necessary and so forth or a maid. She, she did it all herself, but yet she could find time because she was putting an influence to some children that finally changed because of the world. I think that the old fashioned mother, the old fashioned woman, were prayer and the understanding of the Bible. I am an heir of joy. I am an heir of divine lily. Got a right to be. So what makes you happy? How do you know? Because I am an heir to it. Now I feel religious. Yes. I am an heir of joy. I am an heir of peace. I am an heir of divine healing. I am an heir of Holy Spirit. I am an heir of every everything. I am an heir of the authority of God who made you and guides you, not me, and you are a hair of something. This should never die and just fit all the unit among you people. You should never let this drop. If you feel a little bit left, just keep going, just keep moving on, just go right, believe it, and I'm sure God will bless you. Philippians 1, verse 1 to 3 says, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and, he sh and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that he bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall, shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. God is good all the time. You promised in the last days that they will come for the message that will restore the heart, the faith of the children back to its fathers. Oh God, let us return to that original days of the Pentecost. Oh, let us return back to that great faith that was that was once delivered with the saints. Please 
listen to my voice, don't miss the train. It will hunt you all your life when you are suffering all your punishment. In the willing and gnashing of teeth, that voice will scream barefoot and you will hear it all the time in that very spooky place of hell. Don't fail, now is your opportunity. Exodus 14, verse 40 and 50 says, The Lord shall fight for you and shall hold your peace. The Lord said to Moses, Why cry to me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. Okay, thank you. Another round of applause for the kids. Now we are going to have a song by Ruth and Menyasha. So my I got again. Praise God.
Shalom Saints, we are going to present our drama from the spoken word, My Redeemer Lived. 55 days 04 105, paragraph 106. Let's hear the drama. God bless you. Amen. When Brother Branham was a young boy preacher at a place where he was preaching, there was a lady who was a Sunday school teacher, and this brother was a minister. On a certain church, these two tried to convince Brother Branham to, to join them on a world unity, but Brother Branham could not be convinced because his life was angered on the resurrection, transforming the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's sit back and relax as we watch the scene unfold. How are you, big brother? How are you, sister? I am I fine, am and fine. you? Last night, we had some fun. We enjoyed it, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. We enjoyed the dance. I wish we could invite Billy to the dance. Yeah, I think he will like it. Oh, there is Billy. Let's How talk to him. Billy? How are you, my sister? How are you, Billy? How are you, my brother? How are you, Billy? How was your day? It was fine. I was wondering if you can join us today. No. We are going to a show. No. Do you dance? No, I don't dance. Do you ever have fun? No, but if you want to see where I enjoy having fun at, come down to church, I will show you. Billy managed to convince the two to come with him. Upon the arriving service, the church service was a blessing. Let's hear the ceremony.
Atako was cold. Many people came to the Atako surrendering their lives. Billy saw the young lady crying, sobbing in the balcony. Now you see my brother. When I feel that resurrection transforming power of the Lord Jesus Christ, circling through a human body, I feel that perfect assurance and it brings joy in my heart. Amen. As for you, my sister, I am happier than all the things you'd give in the whole world. Chapter 2, verse 25 to 28.
gramophone is pocketed in two frames. Preach 57 0 for 20, paragraph 115. Let's sit back in, uh, and enjoy the drama unfold. Some time ago, a little boy was sitting in a wagon and a gun fired down the street. The horse ran away a cliff. A young cowboy ran and stopped at the horse before it went over a cliff because it has a baby in it. He saved the little one's life. Many years later, the same boy went to the courthouse. The same boy was arrested. He was found drinking, gambling, shoot a man, and he was found guilty. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Yes. I was wondering if we can go to the battles and have one or two gambos there. Let's go. Yeah. What's up, guys? What's up? Hello. I was wondering if we can page some man together. Okay. When they arrived, they also found people who were gambling. They start betting with money. Unfortunately, the boy and his friend lost the game and they started a fight with the one who had won. Let's play. Okay. Carry on. Joke. Five verse. Five more minutes. Two verse. Okay. Close. Carry on. Yeah, we won the game. We won the game. Give us our money. No, we won the game. Give us our money. We need it. Give no, us our money. No, we won the game. Give us our man. Give us our man. No, one game. Give us our man. Give us our man. Give us our man. No, Give us no, our man. No, Give me my man. Game. It's on my man. We Give me back my man. Give me my money back. We want the Give game. Give me my money back. We want the game. No, no, no. Please don't shoot my friend. Please don't shoot my friend. You have found guilty of drinking, smoking in public places, and shooting a man. I sentence you that you must hang by your neck until your mortal life is gone. The young man broke the procession as he jumped over a rail and fell at the judge's feet. Oh, my judge! Oh, my judge! Don't you remember my face? No, son. I am that little boy certain life you saved many years ago. Yes, I remember you. You sent me then, Judge. So send me now. No, son. That day I was your savior, but today I am your judge. Today he is your savior. 
tomorrow he may be your judge. Let's think of it over now. What are you doing with your life? Gambling, drinking, doing all sorts of bad things. Jesus Christ is your savior now as he is calling you to come follow him. When this life is over, he will judge you, everyone. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 13 and 14 says, Let's be at the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of men. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. God bless you.
the Lord, praise the Lord. Wonderful. Wonderful. Tuweza kutasaba na pastor. Pastor wa gara babi. Who is at the back? Fine. Wonderful. Mangu sonero omega kutu icon. Wakali. Praise the Lord. You know the, the importance of a student teacher relationship because normally the students manifest what the teacher is. So from what we've seen quite what could right. My quotation are spoken word best and we know that the spoken word is the original seed. Let's give another round of applause for Icot. Praise God. So for now now ending over the program to brother mshanga amen amen god bless you to you all we are continuing with our program with the gift fund class and as they go out we will still sing go 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 Moses, Moses, go. Go Moses, Moses, go.
poems from the little ones from our infant class. Power of prayer. There is power in prayer. Joshua prayed and the sun stopped. There is power in prayer. Brother Branham prayed in season and the seals were opened. There is power in prayer. Hannah prayed and God gave her a prophet Samuel. There is power in prayer. Elijah prayed and there was abundance of rain. There is power in prayer. Moses prayed and the Red Seas were opened. There is power in prayer. Our father of faith, Abraham, prayed and God gave him Isaac. Brother Branham prayed and squirrels were created. There is power in prayer. Brother Branham prayed for the sick and they were healed and prayed for the dead and they were raised. Prayer, prayer, prayer. There is power in prayer. God said, come unto him, all those who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. The mighty conqueror. Fight with what's in your hands. It is singing, sing the gospel. If we can't do nothing but whistle, whistle. Just as loud as we can for the glory of God. If we can't do no more than touch your hand, touch them. If Conquer with whatever you got in your hand. Clap them in such a way that all your neighbors will love you. Whistle in such a way that all the nations you made belong to Christ. Conquer them. Play the, play, play the game fair, play it right. Paragraph 19. Thank you. <laughs> does not take no for an answer. I am the foundation for me to carry the whole structure. I must be strong. Faith. Faith is the foundation. Faith believes the word of God. God says so and I believe it. Virtue is the strength and power. Let me go to my brother. I want to draw virtue out of him. Or I want to draw virtue out of him. Oh my, the check has bounced back. Insufficient funds. Don't be a Christian today or tomorrow. See you out there carrying on like a sinner. Not much virtue can be drawn from that, but some virtue must be in us. Even we brother Vangwa Ka Omera, Kubaku Gara, Kose Kwataka Ita Makore Ose Ay, Handi Piwi Kana Marie Madomas, Dinoto Verengera, Iti Vamu Omea, brother, A Ininda Neta Kurima, the Kuenda Kumbakunon Tikwa Amai Vangu. Have patience with one another. Godliness. To be like God, all things that is in God is in you. For the Bible said, ye are God's.
brotherly kindness, but this brother in the but this brother sinned against me. How many times must I forgive him? But the Bible says seven times seven. Right, the brother is all out of truth. I'm going, but I'm going to be kind and patient in her. I've got my A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, T, Z, degrees plastered all over the walls of my house. What shall you say to me? Knowledge. Not only knowledge, but the knowledge of the word of God. That's what God says. It's able to perform. <laughs> Temperance, Holy Spirit temperance. Brother, sister, control your tongue. Control your temper and don't fly off every time. If someone steps on your feet, talk with godly love and kindness. Our presentation is the stage of a perfect man. For God wants to dwell in you, wants to make him like himself, wants to reflect his being, but first you must be born again. Now we see the seven virtues coming up in that order. If all these seven virtues are in you, the keeping stone which is love, God himself will keep your life. God tabernating himself in a body, and elsewhere God can see in. God can talk in, God can work in, God can see in, God can talk in. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Let's talk to the Amen.
give us one song Amen, amen, oh, 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 amen, hallelujah.
today we are going to present a drama of a good Samaritan. There was a certain man walking from Jerusalem to Jericho. He was beaten by the robbers, leaving him half dead. Oh, these days you are broke. We need money. There is this man coming. Let's rob him. You take the bag and I'll take the phone. And oh. me, I take the money. Passing by. Bless me, O oh Lord. Bless. Yay! This man is badly wounded, but I can't help. I'm late for I'm late for church. I must go and preach at I got. He let me go. <laughs> Now we see a Levite passing by. My prophet, my prophet, and my prophet. Yeah, this man is badly wounded. It's the robbers I know. Maybe they are nearby. Let me run or else they'll beat me too. <laughs> now we see a good Samaritan passing by. man is badly wounded. What happened there? My friend, my friend, is unconscious. Look at those wounds. My friend, I'll take you to the hospital. I'm sure you'll get fine. I'm sure you'll get fine. I'm sure the nurses will do great. Now we see the nurses and the doctors helping this man. This man is badly wounded. What happened? What happened? I saw him lying on the ground. I'm sure they might be robbers. I promise I'll bring the money when I come back. Hello, doctor. Come quickly. There's an emergency. I'm coming. Dr. Kuta. Oh, this man is badly wounded. Many check the temperature. Oh, the temperature is too high. Nurses, take care of him, address the wounds, and give him pills. Okay, doctor. Give me the better deal. Give me the pills. Give me the old. Give me the better deal. Give me the bandage. Give me the arm sling. Give me the better thing. Give me the <laughs> Okay, then. I think he's feeling much better. Do you want water? Yes. I think I must be an ice cream too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. Here's your ice cream. Here's your water. And your ice cream. Today. He's feeling much better. 
My friend, how are you feeling? I'm feeling much better. I've discharged him today. He can go home now. Thank you, nurses. Thank you, doctor. Here's the money I promised to give you. Thank you. My friend, let us go. This is the end of our drama. Amen. Oh neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor, love your neighbor. Charity begins at home. Love your neighbor, love your neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself. Greetings to you all, saints of the living God. Learn to recite the poem about the high calling. Now, if God has called you to be like Jesus in your spirit, he will draw you into a life of crucifixion and humility and put you on such demands of obedience that he will not allow you to follow other Christians in many years. He will seem very religious, useful, he will, seem, he will seem to let other good people do things that will not let you to do. Other Christians and ministers who seem very religious, useful, may push themselves, poor wise, well schemes to carry out their plans, but you cannot do it. And if you are trained to do it, you will meet with such failure we broke from the Lord as to make you soul penetrate. Others can break on their writings, on their work, on that success, but the Holy Spirit will not allow you to do such things. And 
if you bring it. He'll lead you into such deeper mortification and will make you despise yourself and your good works. Others may be allowed to succeed in making great sums of money or having a legacy left them as in having luxury. But God may supply you daily because he wants you to have something far better than gold that is a hopeless dependence on him so that he may have the privilege of providing your needs day by day out of his unseen treasury. The Lord may let others be honored and put forward and keep you hid away in obscurity because he wants you to produce some chase fragments for his coming glory, which can only be produced in the shade. Thank you. God will let others be great but keep you small. You let others do your work for you and get a credit for it. But he will let you work and toy you without letting me know how much you are doing it. And then to work and then to make your works too more precious. But he will, and you will let others get credit for the work which you have done. And this will make your reward ten times greater when Jesus comes. The Holy Spirit will put a strict watch on you with jealous love and rebuke you for little words and feelings. Or, or wasting your time, which other Christians seem not distressed over. Thank you. So be clear in your mind that God is an infinite sovereign, and he has the right to do what he pleases with his own. And he will not explain to you a thousand things that puzzle your reason in dealings with you. God will take you at your word, and if you absolutely sell out yourself to be his slave, he will wrap you in jealousy, love, and let other people do and say things that you cannot see or do. Settle it forever, for you are to deal directly with the Holy Spirit, and that he is to have the privilege of trying your tongue, chaining your hands, and closing your eyes in ways that others are not dealt with. Now, when you have... Now, when you are so possessed with the living God in your hearts, pleased and delighted, you will have found the first door of heaven. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Amen. Now, poem that I receive from the junior class. Now they are going to give us a play. The junior class will give us a play. Okay, there's yet another poem that's coming through from the junior class. The poem is entitled Faithful. Shalom, Shalom Saints. Standing before you, is none other than the Comber Robert here to present the poem, Faithful. Faithful, now you Christian soldier, as you walk the narrow way. For the master guides you always, ever onward day to day. Faithful, now you Christian soldier, as on your journey you progress. For the tempter holds no power, should he attempt to distress. Faithful, now you Christian soldier, even when shadows cross your path, for the master is always with thee, always will be, and always will be. As you now end your journey, as heaven's gates fly round the bend, faithful now you Christian soldier, God's word you did defend. God bless you.
Mune Simba Mura Parajeso Greetings to you parents, brothers and sisters. The Bible is a living book in which we as Christians need to see ourselves. If we take that attitude, we'll find that God will be seen in our lives just as he was seen in Bible days. In this day, God sent us a prophet messenger to tell us that he is still the same today as he was yesterday and shall be tomorrow. The junior Sunday school play that you're about to see from the life of the prophet William Marion Branham, is a clear testimony that if we put God to the test, is a clear testimony that if we put God to the test, he will come on the scene. 
a colored washerwoman in an obscure part of America, in a ghetto town of Memphis, Tennessee, grounded the prophet's plane by prayer. We trust to be blessed by this play. It so happened that at the same time that the woman of Memphis was praying, a plane carrying Brother Branham from a long missionary campaign in Texas got caught up in a heavy storm and made an unscheduled landing in Memphis. The airline settled his passengers in the Peabody Hotel so that they could be able to wait out the storm. Meanwhile, after a long night of prayer and supplication, the washwoman Auntie Jemima drift o drifted off to sleep and slept and dreamed she saw Brother Branham coming to her neighborhood and passing by her gate. She rose early in the morning and went to wait at her gate. At the hotel morning following the storm at 6 a.m., an airline attendant called Brother Branham to inform him that his plane will resume its journey at 8 a.m. sharp. After the storm had subsided the previous night, Brother Branham decided to find a post box to, a post, box to post some letters as he was sure. He would be just in time to catch his flight. Watch what happens next. Hello? Hello, is this Ref? Yes, it is. How are you, ma'am? I'm very well, thanks. I'm calling from the airline to inform you that the plane is going to resume its journey at 8 a.m. sharp. Please be checked by that time. Many thanks, lady. I'll get ready right away. Goodbye. I think I can find a post box and post these letters in time to catch a shuttle to the airport. I'd better get back to my hotel before I'm late. Father, what would you have your servant do? I wonder what it is the Lord wants me to do. It is almost 8 a.m. I guess I'll have to make other arrangements for travel. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Auntie. Wait a minute. Do you know who I am? No, sir. Then how did you know I was a person? I knew you were coming. How did you know I was coming? I didn't even know myself that I was coming. Auntie, my name is Branham. Have you ever heard of me? No, sir, Pastor Branham. My ministry here is praying for the sick people. Would you like me to come inside and play, pray for your sick boy? Of course. Say, say, sweet boy. He's been out of his day in bed for two days. We think he's in a lot of lost out in the ocean. That's why I can't stand it. He's agony. And don't worry. The Lord Jesus Christ will hear your boy. Let's pray. You go first. Lord Jesus, the grace of heaven and earth, I come before you again. Lord, bring my son in this situation. May it please you do something for him, Lord. Lord, may it please you. I promise that I'll break him in your fear and admonition to do something. If I hear that he's in Jesus, I'll be so happy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dear God, I don't know what's going on, 
But on this street this morning, you turned me around and sent me to this little hut. It's way past my time for my plane to fly, but no matter. In agreement with the leading of the Holy Spirit, I lay my hands upon this boy. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Getting light. Mom, who is this man? And what is she doing here? Uh, My son, this is Reverend Branham. He prayed for the sick and he has just prayed for you. Mom, can I get something to eat? Uh, I would love to stay, but I have to catch my shuttle. God bless you. Prophet Brother Branham was amazed by the faith of this simple washwoman. When she prayed, she spoke to somebody she knew. He was also touched by her attitude towards his son. Despite what he had done, he was still her baby boy, a real mother's love. At the airport, Brother Branham was surprised to find that his plane had not taken off. He just managed to board as it was warming its engine for takeoff. It had, been, it had been delayed by a whole two hours, and in total, his flight had been grounded for 18 hours. This is what prayer and faith in God can do. Years later, at a train station, Brother Branham was surprised to be greeted by a huge colored young man who he didn't recognize. It, it was this boy who not only was now strong and healthy, but had also become a Christian. This also demonstrates what the power of the token can do to our children. We trust this play had been a blessing to you. God bless you, Rich. Thank you, thank you. Another round of applause. Are we tired? <laughs> I like that honest one. <laughs> Stay sure. But you are not yet tired. We've just got a little more for you. And I know that it's going to be, it's getting nicer. And you'll enjoy it. We are going to go to San Mishiwaka now. You know, we, we, it's not only just Sunday schools, but career development that happens there. We had nurses, we had doctors, and uh, we had teachers too. This is where they start. These are our deacons, you know our ushers, our elders. You know, so these, these are the ones to whom the end of the world has come. Amen. So we, we respect them. Because that's a bit only more. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I know if they get ready, let's, uh, let's get ready for some mission work here. We are going to have some nice uh, preaching. We've got four preachers who are just going to give us a gastronomical jubilee. Oh, they are five. Amen. So let's feature ourselves in mission work this evening. God bless you. Afternoon, saints. Afternoon, afternoon saints. Afternoon. I trust that you're all blessed this afternoon. Amen. My name is David Simbrashech Bendo, and I'll be the one to officially start the Mishwaka campaign. I trust that you'll be blessed. Amen. 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 So let us open our Bibles in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 23 to 28. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, a made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is the end of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, 
whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of this word. So my title is going to be Christ in you, the hope of glory. May all repeat it. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. We preach, we teach, and we warn. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ said, the kingdom comes not with observation. Luke chapter 17, verse 20. It is in you. This was one of the mysteries revealed by the prophet William Branham in these days of the end time. If you go to the sermon, is this the sign of the end, says, preached on the 30th of December, 1962, paragraph 260. He says, the mystery of the baptism of the Holy Spirit without sensation, but the person of Christ performing the same work that he did, being done into you. So you come to find out, people say they have the Holy Spirit when they have it. People can dance in the Spirit or speak in tongues, but you just find out that it's just an anointing which comes upon them. But when that anointing leaves them, they're back to their frustration. That's why we see many millionaires and many famous people who have mysterious end because they lack the Holy Spirit inside them. What I'm saying to this afternoon is that God is real. Amen? When he comes, he speaks for himself. When he comes, he gives a peace that passes all understanding. The prophet Branham said, though they may take you under and pour the dirt on top of you, that's the undertaker. But someday, the uptaker will come one of, one of these days and take out something which was left in that body of yours. That's your celestial body, your theophany, saints, amen? amen. Though this earthly tabernacle may be dissolved, there's another one eternal in the heavens waiting for us. That's the one when Christ comes, he comes with it and will rule forever with our redeemed body, incorruptible. God bless you. Amen. Shalom, saints. Let us turn our Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 118, verse 8. It reads, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. Again, we will also turn our Bibles to the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 2, which reads, Set your affections on things above not on things on the earth. So, using those two scriptures, today our message we are going to focus on, where you put your trust and affection. So in the first scripture, it was talking about how we must put our trust in God, not in men. So let us see what exactly is meant by trust. According to the dictionary, trust means confidence in or reliance on a person or quality. Then the second scripture talked about how, as Christians, we are supposed to set our affections on things above, not on things of earth. And affection basically means that a feeling of love or strong attachment. So what this means is that we must put our trust, our confidence, our reliance, our love, our all in Christ. Because he is the only thing that will last forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. We can put our hopes on man-made things. We can put our hopes on money, on cars, on friends. But in the end, the only thing that will last us forever is that one true friend, Christ Jesus. Amen? For example, if we look at the life of Moses, his life proves that putting your trust in God will always make things come out right. He was next in line to rule Egypt, which back then was the superpower of the world. So basically you can say that he was next in line to rule the world, but he chose to forsake that. Why? Because 
He saw it fit to take his lot with the Lord's despised few. The Israelites who were persecuted, who were called mad dobbers, who were treated as slaves, yet he saw it better to be with them than to be raised among kings where you could do anything he wished. Why? Because he saw that there was something genuine, something that he could put his trust in, that he could put his affection in. And even though Egypt is no longer the superpower that it is, but we still remember Moses. He is still up there in heaven. Why? Because he chose the right thing to put his trust and affection in. For example, we also see this echoed in the court 560101, paragraph 66. It reads, My faith doesn't anchor in what the coming meetings will be. My faith doesn't rest in only any ability that I would have. Or upon what church I should join. Or what people I should associate with. My faith anchors and rests entirely upon the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ already being received. So here, Brother Branham is clearly saying that he does not put his faith in a church, in a denomination, in the meetings, in anything earthly. But he puts his faith, his trust, his affection, his all in God. And I'm sure that he bet right. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you, saints. Amen. God bless you. Let's open our Bibles to Psalms chapter 96, verse 18. The Bible says, Before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, he shall judge the world with righteousness and people with his truth. So, brother, brothers and sisters, there are thousands of different denominations in this world. Each religion condemns the other, yet they all promise salvation through their denomination. How do we know which one to choose? Now, if we choose the Catholic Church, then we accept the intercession of saints. So, the Bible says in First Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So the priest is called Father, which was forbidden by Jesus. In Matthew, in Matthew chapter 23, verse 9, it says, And call no man of Father upon the earth, for one is of Father which is in heaven. So, brothers and sisters, the assemblies of God tells, uh, tells us that speaking in tongues is the initial FJ of the Holy Ghost. When, when Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, Thou I speak with tongues of men and of angels, and have not shared, and become a sounding brass or a tingling silver. Now, almost all denominations are quick to tell us that many things in the Bible are misinterpreted, lost in, lost in translation, or don't apply in today's world. So, are we supposed to believe the Bible or the denominational document? doctrines. What will God use as a starting for judgment? If I would ask the Catholic here tonight, what do you think that God will judge the world by? The Catholic say, by, by us, then you, then you Baptists are out. And then if we would say, by the Baptists, then you Pentecostals are out. So there will be such a confusion. No one would know what to do. So he never promised to judge the world by church. He promised to judge the world by Christ, and Christ is the word. And the Bible is what we judge the world by, which is Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Blessings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's open our Bibles in Mark chapter 13, verse 32 to 37. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son but the Father. Take you heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is a, is a man taking a virgin who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch 
Watch you therefore, for you know not when the time when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto, unto you all, watch. You are taking the title of this message from Mark chapter 13, verse 33. Watch and pray. You are not just praying, but you are watching and praying. Watch, a state of alert and continuous attention. And pray to address, to make a request in a humble manner to address God with adoration, confession, and supplication, or thanksgiving. Paul was telling to the believers, you brethren, you are not in the darkness. That that day of the Lord should overtake you like a surprise as a thief. He said, you are all the children of light, of light and the children of day. He says, we are not of night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us keep our wide awake, watchful, be on guard. Let us be sober, collected circumstances. Let us... We are always watching, having our eyes open on God. What I say unto you, I say unto you all, watch. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Shalom, saints. So taking our reading scripture from Matthew 22, verse 34 to 40, it says, But when the Pharisees heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest law in the law, the commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like <coughs> unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. One of these two commandment, hang on the law and the prophets. Amen. So what we are seeing here is just like to say there are, there are two types of love that was predicting by, by, by Jesus. He said, firstly, it is the love of God. And you can, if you can go to Exodus 20, from one up to five, four commandments, it is between for the love of God. You can make, you cannot make a graphic image if you love God. And Amen. the other one is the love of man. You cannot kill a man, you cannot steal from a man, but, but love protects it. In, the prophet says that love conquers everything. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said in John 14, verse 16, if you love me, you keep my commandment. And in Mark 22, verse 33, he says, and to love him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your soul and with all your strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than a whole burnt offering and sacrifice. We know that on John, John 3 verse 16, we, sh we, we sh know that it's what we are at Pharisee at the wound to run away wake up for open you can at it here and that's what you want to see so far now to take the raw issues into our world. Amen. He said in John 13, verse 35, By this all men know that ye are my disciples, if you continue to love one another. Brother and sister, the people shall know that ye are the Christians, if you continue to love one another. In Hebrews 13, verse 1, he said, Let brotherly love continue. Amen. Amen. Begin joy, Mishwaka. Amen. Give them a hand. God bless you. As the senior class prepares, if the senior class can come through, and we'll allow them to walk off the stage with applause. Amen. This is our future. This is where we are going to. We are preaching in God's parish that will see us into the rapture. <laughs> Amen. They are preaching. <laughs> Amen. That's wonderful. And the senior, I think that was the last uh, act from the junior class. And I now invite uh, the senior class to come through. If you can hide.
Ha <laughs> ha 
Kutenda kwangu ndo putu kwa nako brothers and sisters in Christ. Today you witness the story of the rich young ruler. So, we all hold on to things that keep us from fully following God. Jesus once told us a story of a rich young ruler who wanted to know how to get into heaven. But when Jesus told him, 
the young man was sad. This is a modern day look at how could have happened after the rich and blessed encounter with Christ. Oh, hello, hey, admire. Hello, hello, boss. What's up? Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't make it today. Uh, I got busy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand, boss. I understand. So, can we make the meeting at 8 tomorrow in the morning? Okay, at 8 in the morning tomorrow? Yes, by my office. Ah, that's, that's okay, that's okay, boss. That's sure, fine. let's meet then. Fine. Wow, it's been a hectic day. Well, there's one good thing. I made a couple of dollars. I think I should make a plan on how to spend them tonight. That's all I can do. Oh my, oh my, it has been a very busy day and a tiring one too. Oh, I think that's the young man who was with Jesus. But look at the money that he has, those notes. I think I must talk to him, yes. But look at my clothes, how can I talk to him? A rich man like that. My trousers is torn, but today they call them ripped jeans, I think. Yes, I must talk to him, but wait. My shirt is torn too, but never mind. I must talk to him. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Oh, yes. How may I help Are you, you the one who was talking to Jesus? Yes, that's me. See, I'm interested because now he's down there and he's talking about, well, ish. My bones, oh, Jojo, my bones. He's saying it's easy for a camel, a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than for a. <laughs> A rich man to enter heaven. Well, now, say, can you explain to me what were you speaking about with Jesus? Wounds are a camel through the eye of a needle. Then rich men in heaven. Actually, I'm not interested. But say, I'm sorry. What were you speaking about with Jesus? Peter. Uh, Peter, how did you know my name? Ah, fine, I think I see Peter. I think I know the moon. I'm not going to pop up. Yes, 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 yes. I, Peter, I walked on water. Yes, yes. Men like us of great faith. Yes, yes. I walked on water. <laughs> oh, about that story. But wait. It was a stormy night. Yes. A stormy, stormy night. Then I saw Jesus coming, walking on water. Then I, Peter, I wanted to, to walk on that water. Then Jesus bade me come. And brother, I was walking on that water. Walking on that water. Yes, I was walking on the water. Yes. But then I made a mistake. I thought, this water, I could drown here. Then suddenly, I found myself drowning in the water. But wait, back to my story. I saw you talking with Jesus. Oof. Let me put it this way. I wanted to help Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. I think I didn't hear you clearly. Let me remove my head. You talking about helping Jesus. The word, my brother. Ah, 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 ah. Well, you see, like I was You see, I thought he was going to ask me about the do's and don'ts. Are you doing this? Are you not doing this? And well, you see me, I'm the model Christian, I'm doing all that. I go to church, I pay my tithes. They don't know better I am. And I And what's motor 13 when I go to the Okay. 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 And the CSA sent him to it. The CSA says, Ah, Okay, okay. So that's where you are coming from. You talking about all the wealth that you have. But my brother, oh, my brother, all that wealth, is it compared to the eternal life that Jesus wanted to give you? Is it compared, my brother? Look, each and every one of us, we have to give up something to follow Jesus. Even I myself, Peter. I myself, Peter, I gave up something to follow Jesus. Yes, yes. What did you even do before you followed this man? <laughs> Look how muscular I am. How physique. Yes, <laughs> I was a fisherman. <laughs> a fisherman. 
And you think that's a lot. But look, my brother, the way you're talking about it doesn't fit the picture I was in. Being a fisherman was all that I had. It was my life. I neither can read nor write. But when I was wait, when I was a fisherman, I would feed my family. Yes. When I was a fisherman, it's the only thing that kept me from being in the streets, begging for food. But brother, oh my, when Jesus came to me, when the word came to me and told me to give it up, amen, I gave it all up. I gave it all up. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. But it's not about being able to read and write. It's not about having, well, what I have. I understand. But you see, I wanted to help Jesus, genuinely. I did. Okay, okay, okay. So the, it's about the good intentions, the good objectives that you have. But I think I have an idea of what kind of a person you are. Look, my brother, your smartness. Yes, I can see. Put there in the label. Gucci. Yes, yes. Your trousers. Versace. Yes, yes. Even the budget in your hands. Louis Vuitton, Vito, Amen, Amen. Yes. But my brother, is it all worth it? Yes, good intentions you have. Well, I know the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I know that all. But is it Jesus who sets the rules? Is it Jesus who tells me what to do? This is my life. I decide. Okay, I have to make those choices. Okay. Decisions, decisions. Yes, true. Decisions, decisions. We are all free moral agents. Every time we come to Jesus, he's more than ready. And he's all the time ready to give us that eternal life. But it's up to us now either to take it or, re or reject it. To you, brother, you asked him, good master, what must I do to have this eternal life? He told you what to do, but you went away sad. It's a decision-making time. Yes, yes. Oh, I can't live it all. I can't live my life. What? My brother, today is your giver of eternal life, yes. But tomorrow, if you reject this opportunity, he might be your judge. Oh, yes. Oh, Peter, I can't. Oh, my brother, please. Yes, yes, you can. You have an opportunity. I yes, no, you can. I brother. cannot. I oh, cannot. Oh, my. Oh, my. Lies, lies. Yes. Admire. Oh, my. Hello. Yes, boss. About that meeting, yeah, I was yes, in deep conversation with this man. Well, he talked about eternity. Okay. Well, I think we should now build a legacy, something that will live on, something that will live through eternity. I agree with you. We can't have it tomorrow anymore. Wow. Let's meet tonight at my office, 8 p.m. Okay. 8 p.m. it is, okay. on the dot. Okay, boss. Okay. See you then. So, the rich young ruler went on to be successful in life. As we can see, success is not a measure of God's obedience or God's approval. He went on to mines, farms, and bitcoins. He had investments in all that could bring him money. Little did he know that through the splendor of his achievements, God would take away his life. As Jesus once said, a man is a fool if... He stores up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. So, it is better to lose up and give up earthly treasure than rejecting eternal life. So, brothers and sisters, what is it that you're holding on to that is stopping you from following God? And what is it that you're holding on to that is stopping you from doing God's word for eternal life is also presented before you all. Thank you.
Once again, brothers and sisters, what keeps you from following God? Maybe it's just the way you keep rationalizing your lifestyle as a believer. Well, watch, sit, and learn. Yeah. And before that, my was a movie has a bit of violence, but no goes wrong, ma'am. It's just a movie. Hmm. And I don't know a bit of nudity, but ma'am, it's just a movie. No goes wrong. This must run. Ah, shaganak. Chukwe sera, ma'am. In a bit of nudity. Mom, <laughs> They taste a little bit different. My age is the same. Ah, it shouldn't ruin it shouldn't ruin the old age. Zangwe says shoma shoma. Ah, let me guess. My age is paprika. Ah ah. All spice. And no boys. Sagashi. Now there is a dog poop. It's just a little bit. Mom. Well, brothers and sisters, as we can all see, the doll thought it was fine going to some movie with a little bit of violence a little bit of cursing and a little bit of nudity. But when the mother tried to offer her the brownies with a little bit of dog poop, she began to resent them as they spoiled up the whole bunch. The little things she thought were not important are the little foxes that Brother Branham said spoil the vine. The devil would take those little foxes together with you, take you further away from God than you want to go. So what keeps you from following God? 
bottom line, it might be you. Brothers and sisters, at this point in time, you will see two friends communing. One is an end time message believer, and the other one is an atheist. Well, we'll see how the believer will try to stand for her beliefs. Will she be able to stand firmly, heads on, like a true convicted Christian? Well, sit tight as the scene unfolds. Hey girl, where have you been? Oh, see, I the church thing. Anyways, that then I like next time. When the next time? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to church again. but what to the artist? And invite and the chance Anyways, I know this one know that, but uh, there's more than hot music. Yeah, Anyways, how many calls did you get tonight? Five, but that's not the point. What do you mean? That's not the whole point. God shows up. What did she? God shows up. Like feeling what you know, with a big white limo pulls up, door opens, smoke comes out. Ladies and gentlemen, God is in the house. No, it's not like that. So what's it like then? You know what? I can go and get the manual to the microwave and I can read and know how it works. Me too. I got my manual too. Your Bible? Yeah, my Bible. Okay, show me then. Okay, first the Chronicles. Oh, Romans. Okay, let me open John 3. No, 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 my girl. Don't throw John 3.16 at me because it won't work. Oh, now you're putting me on the spot. I'm not putting you on the spot because that's not a manual, that's a trophy. Because you put me on the spot? Yeah. Ah, uh, that's not. Because this, this whole Christian thing is a whole joke. When did Christianity become a joke? It became a joke when Christians stopped acting like they are supposed Christ. Oh, that's not it. So, what's it like then? Oh, uh, it's like... Anyway, the only difference between you and me is that you believe in God and I don't. Yeah, that's a huge difference. No, it's not because if you let anyone, anyone try again, to watch our lives, they can see that my deity to get to go test it, my party to go to the my party to go to the test, my boyfriend to go to the test, my brother to go to the test, my brother to go to the test, my brother to go to the Holy Ghost, receive the Holy Ghost. Shop on our room, Holy Ghost here. You want to argue with me? Ah, I just want to put on this one. It's okay.
Once again, brothers and sisters, today Christians have made Christianity a joke. They have become cold, formal, and statue weak believers who cannot even stand for what they believe because they've let down the guard. And the sad thing is, we think it's okay. We live complacent lives. We rationalize our lifestyle. We fear things and we pretend to act as perfect Christian believers in church of what we're not. So what keeps you from following God? Maybe it's just you. Thank you. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We, as the senior class and the school, would like to give a short presentation on the modern-day events being made clear by prophecy, specifically looking at Russia, as the prophet emphasized us to be vigilant in watching the King of the North and how we should fix our eyes on Israel, as well spiritual Israel, typing what happens in the natural, and it is God's timepiece. History is unfolding. God's great redemptive plan is also unfolding with a beginning, middle, and an end. The question is, do we understand the times that we're living in? If we do, we'll be better equipped like the men of the tribe of Issachar, men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, and like the men of the tribe of Zebulun, who went forth to battle, expert with, in war, with all instruments of war. First Chronicles 12, verse 32 to 33. Just think... God has allowed us to live in a day whereby we see his prophetic clock starting to run again. We are the generation to see the biblical prophecies come to pass. We should rejoice to be living in such an age. The king is coming. So I'm going to leave this time to Brother Nyasha, who's going to present on Israel, God's timepiece, and Brother Ked, who's going to present on Russia. Thank you, Sister Sharon, for the wonderful introduction. Shalom, saints. Shalom, saints. Uh, 
Thank you. So today I'm going to do a presentation on the current event which we are all know today that's unfolding in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas. On the 7th of October, a once peaceful Israeli festival was soon turned into a massacre within Israel borders by the armed Palestinian terrorist organization known as Hamas. This unprecedented attack has now moved from within Israeli borders into the Gaza Strip and having escalated to claiming more than a thousand lives. Now we see the world in a state of tension as it tries to resolve these birth pangs of what is surely to come. Israel has always been faced by adversity, whether be it by the Egyptians, the Philistines, the Babylonians, the Nazis, the Persians, the Romans, and so on. Just like us, the spiritual Israel were often tried and tested. But what do all these modern events mean to us, the chosen bride of Christ? If we turn our Bibles to Romans, the 11th chapter, the 25th verse. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And even our prophet in the message preached in 26, on the 26th of April, 1965, proving his word, Brother Branham said, watch where Israel is. You see the time figure where we're at. See, just watch those wonders. If you, or if your eyes are open, see where we're at. Brothers and sisters, Brother Branham has told us that we should be vigilant and watchful for Israel as our timepiece, for us Gentiles to not have a time. Whereas, and the prophet also mentioned five major events which are in connection with Israel towards the end time. The first being the restoration of Israel as a nation. Israel became a nation again on the 14th of May, 1948, despite strong opposition of, the, of its Arabic, Arabic neighbors in the Middle East. The second of which we are seeing today, the conflict between Israel and the surrounding nations. This is what we're witnessing over yonder in Gaza. The mass murder of people in Gaza is one of many conflicts Israel has been facing as a nation due to its Arabic neighbors fulfilling prophecy. The murderous Amalek spirit rises again and again to destroy Israel in the Bible and continues throughout history until this very day. The fourth being the rise of the Antichrist. The Antichrist... Antichrist shall rise, who set up himself in Jerusalem and demand worship, killing those who, all, who oppose his power. The fifth being the great day of the Lord. The great day of the Lord, we all know that God will destroy the nations and set up the kingdom of Jesus Christ in Jerusalem over all nations. If we turn our Bibles once again to Song of Solomon, to Song of Solomon, the second chapter, the 13th verse, the fig tree put forth their, fi their green figs and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. As we all see, Israel's arrival on the end time scene makes a sig marks a significant shift of the works of God from the Gentile dispensation into Israel as a nation. The Gentile dispensation is coming to a close. The elect saints are almost complete. The work of God is going back to his chosen Israel his chosen nation, which is Israel. The final work of God to the Gentile people will come to pass and the rapture will take place. While only God knows the exact day of Christ's return, the important thing is to be ready. For instance, if Jesus was to come this very day, what would you do? Would you be ready to go with him and reign in paradise? Or would you be left ultimately to face the great white throne judgment of God at the end time? As I leave you with this question, as you ponder upon these words, I'll kindly ask Brother KD to present on another modern event made be, being made clear by prophecy between Russia and Ukraine. We say thank you. Bless you, saints. I greet you in the wonderful name of our precious and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. So without wasting much of your time, I'm going to present on what's Russia, the king of the north. So may we open our Bibles in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 6 to 7. Are we all there? <laughs> all right. 
verse 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Brothers and sisters, we are all interested in what is happening between Russia and Ukraine. Each one of you is busy asking themselves questions, like where will it all lead and how will it all end? Our prophet preached a message titled Modernism is Not Clear by Prophecy. And in this message, he tells us how the unfolding of national and political events have already been written in the Bible. Jesus spoke of them. The prophets prophesied of them. Today we see these events blending in perfectly with every scripture through biblical numerology, prophecies, and visions. The prophet told us of a bomb that will probably burst every atom in the earth that is having, hanging over yonder in, in Russia as we speak. It ought to have been fire, but our God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish past you. In the message titled The Mark of the Beast, of 540513, paragraph 137, the prophet says, Now, if you give me one more night, if God does, I'll prove to you that communism is working straight in the hands of Almighty God to destroy the Romans. And remember, I say this as God's prophet, the Russian Empire will drop an atomic bomb of some sort on the Vatican City and destroy it in one hour. That says the Lord. And the Bible said that God took them cruel-hearted men and put them in his hands. And they were instruments in these hands to fulfill his word and to bring back to her exactly what she had coming to her. That's exactly, that's the word. We see strange and unusual natural events, earthquakes, signs in the heavens, and plagues on earth. There is strife between the nations, wars and rumors of, and, and rumors of them, violence in the streets, and Sodom conditions unfolding in the hearts of so many people. The world is going completely insane. The Bible tells us that Russia and communism is playing right in the hands of Almighty God to absolutely rid the earth of the people. But before that can take place, a rapture comes to take the church home. But before, the prophet told us that God will restore Israel and plant them in their own land. The prophet told us that God will restore Israel and plant them in their own land. When that has happened, Russia is to be the last great enemy to attack them. You see how the king of the north is rising, coming down, which is nothing else but Russia, coming down to press against Israel like a whirlwind. Brothers and sisters, are all these events new to us, the bride? Remember that which is, is that which was, and which is to come. There is nothing new under the sun. History repeats itself. Pharaoh's heart was hardened. It, it, it was, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. It was hardened by God so that he could show his power. That's the same way this king of the north is but a tool in God's hands, working, that, working out his plan. In the message, The Invasion of the United States, the prophet says, and there is only thing, and there is only one thing that's left, that's divine judgment, and it's coming. And Russia has got here sitting there waiting for you, brother, to realize that 150 million people could die in one hour, and that could be before daylight breaks in the morning. The whole nation could be annihilated. In conclusion, brothers and sisters, as we see these events being made clear by prophecy, we ought to be revived, to have a form of godliness and the power thereof, to watch and to pray. In the message and writing on the wall, the prophet says, the third vision was in the realm of world politics, for it showed me that there would be three great isms, fascism, Nazism, communism, but the first, the first two would be swallowed up into the third. The voice admonished, watch Russia, watch Russia. Keep your eye on the king of the north. God bless you. A amen. Let's clap for them. Thank you. Let's have another round of applause. <laughs> the young men made their own research from what they heard from this pulpit, and we asked them, no, you are going to present, excuse me, <clears throat> on these uh, modern events, and they gladly did so. Their own research, they came up with their own flow, and uh, we want to thank them for that.
And uh, this I'm going to call upon uh, our Sunday school superintendent. We've just finished our presentations for the senior class. If he may come. How many have enjoyed the presentations? So can we give our kids a round of applause? <laughs> Praise God. Uh, on account of time, uh, we, have to, we, we have to remove other items. But so far, so good. Uh, we, yeah. we are thankful. Uh, for this time that you've given us, uh, the pastor, the church elders, and also the parents. What you've seen here, it's not uh, much from Sunday school, but from you parents. Because remember, we've only about 30%, 30 minutes in a week. Uh, to those who are good in figures, uh, how many minutes do we have in a week? And if you express 30 minutes over the number of minutes in the whole week, you see that it's very insignificant to show that you're, as parents, you are also doing a great work. Can you clap hands for yourselves? So we thank you for your support, uh, the parents, uh, sending your children to Sunday school, as well as giving our kids some offerings so that they can learn these things from a tender age. Are we together? Amen. So we are very thankful. So at this point in time, uh, we've, got a, we've got little presents that we want to hand over to the pastor as well as the associate pastor as a way of showing our appreciation for his support. So we'll just sing a song while we're making some arrangements for that. <coughs> J-O-Y, joy, joy in the Holy Ghost. J-O-Y, joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Joy in the Lord. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Joy in the Lord, J O Y Job. Joy in the Holy Ghost, J O Y Job. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Don't let nobody steal your job. Don't let nobody steal your job. Don't let nobody steal your job. Joy in the Lord. Don't let nobody, don't let nobody steal your job. Don't let nobody steal your job. Don't let nobody steal your job. Joy in the Lord. J O Y job. Joy in the Holy Ghost. J O Y job. Joy in the Holy Ghost, J O Y J O. Oh, joy in Holy. Don't let nobody, don't let nobody steal your job. Don't let nobody steal your job. Don't let nobody steal your job. Joy in the Lord. Don't let nobody, don't let nobody steal your job. Don't let nobody steal. Don't let nobody, nobody steal your job. Don't let nobody steal your job. Don't let nobody. Steal Joy in the Lord. We say amen, amen, amen. We say amen, amen, amen. We say amen, amen, amen. Oh, we say amen. Oh, we say amen, amen, amen. Oh, we say amen, amen, amen. Oh, we say.
now here, so we kindly ask you, Pastor, to come up front so that you can present our token of appreciation. This is the little gift uh, coming from Sunday school, uh, saying to our pastor, thank you very much for your guidance and for the support. We really appreciate you. May the good Lord richly bless you. point in time, we are going to ask, uh, uh, we've, heard, we've learned that Pastor Kanyemba is not around, but we are going to ask somebody who represents him to also come up and receive, Our oh the wife is around, Sister Kanyemba, we can, we, if she hasn't left, she can also come up front and receive uh, our token of appreciation. very much. Uh, we are very sorry that we've taken much time than we anticipated, but I'm sure you've forgiven us. Uh, one of the presentations I had, uh, the kid saying, you must forgive 70 times 7. So if you have been counting, I don't know how many, uh, at what number are you right now? 70 times 7 in a day, 490 times, so I'm sure you are around 5 somewhere there. Otherwise, thank you very much. God bless you richly. Continue praying for us. Amen. Pastor. So now I'm now ending over the program. Back to the pastor. Now I'm using their pulpit. God bless you. Do not tend to say that you For the Sunday school superintendent ended by apologizing for finishing late. I, I, I don't know if you should really apologize. So it's like somebody after feeding you and then you are full and then he says, I'm sorry for feeding you. <laughs> Because uh, we've been enjoying the whole day. Uh, so honestly, we can say we had a, a seven-course meal. Isn't it, brothers and sisters? Yes, these were your children. <laughs> uh, from songs, verses, to quotations, to poems, plays, and the sermons. My, my, my. Uh, you know, I feel like giving you this quotation from things that are to be. The prophet said, as I'm beginning to get old and know now that my days are numbered eh? and know now 
that these young men can take this message and sweep it onto the coming of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I've seen them all, the preachers. Even if you say, let us rest, you know that the message surely shall go forward. I used to love literature as a subject. Ah, uh, So... You know, there's this man, this writer, I think it was um, Tinua Achebe. Uh, he said, where are the young suckers that will grow when the old banana tree dies? And the Zirukupiko Nungirwa, Zinozo Kura, Kanam Banana Mkuru Chinga Wafa. Munoza Zinon Zinungirwa. There will be a banana tree. After so you're saying, where are the young suckers that will grow when the old banana tree dies? So we have seen those suckers here. So we know that the message will go forward. Of course, that's the church of tomorrow. Amen. We saw the preachers. Amen. The deacons. Amen. Um, now we really want to appreciate um, our Sunday school superintendent. That's Brother Tobias Mzimba. Right. Uh, and the teachers, Brother Tafaz Wamplanga, is the teacher for the um, senior class. And then Brother Devson Muragu is the teacher for the junior class. And then Sister Murombezi and Sister Langwani, our teachers for the infant class. These are all the teachers here at HCT. And then we have Sister Muzenda, a Sunday school teacher in ICOT. Now there we have only one class. But you agree with me, she's doing a sterling, a sterling work. Amen. Amen. Now, special thanks to all the classes. Uh, they gave a wonderful presentation. Amen. And we also want to thank the parents. Just underscoring what the superintendent said. Amen. Thanking the parents for bringing the uh, children for Sunday school. And last but not least, we want to check to thank uh, HCT and Aiko Tebaneko. Amen. For all the support. And uh, of course, yes, you can clip hands for yourselves. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and uh, as a token of appreciation to the teachers, the church has something for them. Now, if you can bring the tokens. At the same time, I'll ask the teachers to come forward. Right. Uh, to save our time, they can come forward, all the teachers and the superintendent, and then they'll receive their uh, tokens. There's a token of appreciation from the church to our superintendent here. Let's clap hands as he receives his token of appreciation from the church. Right. That's our so superintendent. Now, uh, Brother Mlanga Tafazwa, our senior class teacher, is also going to receive his token. Let's clap hands. Right, and then we have Brother Devson Urago, teacher for our junior class. This is our junior class. My, 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 this wonderful. Clap hands as he receives. Right, and for our infant class, Sister Murombezi. Sister Murombezi. Right. Thank you for the sake of the photos. 
That's one of the teachers for the infant class. So Let's so clap hands as she receives a token. Then uh, Sister Langwani. Yeah, Sister Langwani. Right. A token for Sister Langwani. A token here the church showing its appreciation. We clap hands. Right. And uh, Sister Muzenda. Sister Muzenda. Sister Muzenda. Amen. Amen. Uh, to the we want to thank the church. To thank the church. We have confidence in our teachers. And they talk about what they were teaching our children. I mean, I think we've come to the end of our uh, program of the day. Uh, now these Sunday school presentations. They also signal uh, the closing of the Sunday school. You'll be notified when we open next year. Amen. Right. One of our deacons. Vanavesve Sunday school. All the Sunday school children. And skuni magifts are excited to go. They give this. Saga pamani ke mchibuda. So I was. Mchambo buda mumbo yenda uko. First use this. And this kuzo uti zizirico. I do not know. Kana matura bumbo bama buda zeyinu. Taking then you go out. Eh atiziwe vati kumi zeyiko yenda tine urombo. We are sorry for those who have left early. Ah, you know, mno zote pane pango pangu tu nogo na ngo tuzungiri reyo. There are some times where you have to be a little bit patient. You know, taka mbota ora pana pangu tu we don't mind even for neta communion. Nekuda wako kuti mode of transport ino siana. Because the mode of transport may be difficult. But pane pangu pangu tu vanu vanu go na ngo na soko tu no. But there are times that people are patient. Tume ngo wa zangu ngo na ngo tu mwe to patience. Wapa na kura zangu tuzungiri ra. Eh, andi tika iswari mwe chete pa gore. It's only one day in a year. And it's more now to go not to Angola to end. So now we see some have already. Eh, last na kuwa na magif sao. Before receiving their gifts. Right. Uh, now in closing. Don't forget our December convention. Amen. 22nd to the 24th. At Arare Showgrounds. Convergence Hall. Invite someone. Let's pray for our next Sunday service, the 17th. And on the 31st of December, it will be a Sunday. So we have our service here and communion and foot washing. God bless you. Right, we'll ask uh, Pastor Joshua Chena to come and close for us with the word of prayer. Tina Matei, Baba Vedu, Vanura Ramani, Garanik Singapir, Imi Makasika Dengani Kanizirimo Mairi, Makungani Zirimo Mari, Jehovah Mukati Time shall be no more. Snotiripan, Marima Kanaka, Chizona, Maricum Sodega Prigs and Emma Blaze, Baba Makanaka Tapo and Nevana, Jehovah Chitras of Tingua, Chisipo, Marima Kanaka Chitibatsera Kum Soroko Denga Jehovah. Kucherichet zanano zedu mafambiro matikiro. Jehovah, sinotura mwe ya mwemuche ni matiri. Baba tiri kuna mata ni muzita anu kusharamambu Jesu Kristo. Nezipo jeva na jamaka tipa baba. Tae kumbira mulao jesi ya ya kaipa kudai kuchu wakumusaru kudenga. Chiti payo uche njeri ukuchenge teza vana vedu vanasika na ni wana komana. Jehovah, mumu ya uche sharu wachino. Vane influenzi ya kawandisa. Vane rinu zero marima kanaka Jehovah inda kutu ya vizepasho gorenyu. Baba say kuti uzaka mati ita kuti wane miyo zi akawanda ten times more than us. Baba tiba tsire wakumsodenga kutunga miravana. Jehovah taona wakumsodenga shwa wakaziza up to this end of the year. Marimaka naka tinote nda wakumsodenga mamu inavo. Maka vachenge teza wakumsodenga kushika pakupera kwe gorerino. Vachifara maklasi zi awo. Apana akawiru wanetsaona. 
Apana one of them wa wataka loser. Mwarivese wangwa waripo vaine utano ya inufaro pasi na afano tunga mira. Kunu wane miishe tinotenda jehova ne chenge tezo. Mwarima kanaka zino tashika pangwene kupezi sira. Baba banga naka mafamba nesu kutisa pano. Mwarimu mchite chukuna mata uchiti tunga mire jekare kuzogera kuzimba zedu. Mwarima kanaka moti chenge teza mutaona. Mwarima kanaka samasimo maizo tisanga zaje. Tine mfari ne utano. Mwarima kanaka mchibetsera. Fundisi mchibetsera rema sande ukuzi tijas. Mwarima kanaka murumba tiri wedu. Jose, pakupezi la kwa Jose. Mbiri ne ngori ne nyasha ne kukutuwa. Mwarima kanaka tozusera kwa muri. Tona mata tinotenda. Ne muzi itaripa msofu wa saose. Zita rahe Jesu Kristo. Amen and amen. Of course, we're going to our musicians here. To thank our musicians here. We're on the post of duties all along. Uh, come to the end of our service. You can wave God bless you to the brother, sister next to you. Amen. Um, yes, the chapel will dismiss our song. We're we'll giving a dismissal song. Yes, Kanamaona patatanga tatine mangu madikons nas angari pamjimbo zao. We had some deacons on the post of duty today. Right, back to Sunday school. From Sunday school. Uh, let's also remember, you know, Pastor Cliff. Uh, he traveled to Malawi on missionary work. So that he may be a blessing. God bless you. Thank you. 